Hey guys, ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to download more FPS for your games. And you might think that this is clickbait, but it's not. This actually works. It's absolutely amazing. And it's known as lossless scaling. With the click of a button, you can get up to four times the original frame rate that your game was running at with this latest update. And it also works on handheld gaming PCs like the ROG Ally and the Ally X. Here's Cyberpunk 2077 with the Ray Tracing Ultra preset on a handheld gaming device. Now with this, we can't quite hit 60 with it, but we're getting a lot more than we did without lossless scaling enabled. This will work on iGPUs, NVIDIA GPUs, AMD GPUs. It even works on ARC GPUs. In this video, I'm gonna show you where to get it and how to use it. But first things first, this application is not free. It's available over on Steam for $6.99. I buy a lot of games on Steam and this is actually one of the best purchases I've made. And if you check out their Steam page, these new announcements right here, you can see that X4 was just added along with G-Sync support. So obviously, in order for this to work, you'll need lossless scaling installed. I've got it right here on my desktop. We're just going to launch it. And it looks a little something like this. One thing you need to keep in mind here is when you hover over one of these settings, it's going to give us an explanation of what this does. Go ahead. Check out all of these. Lots of great information here. Before we jump into it, few things to note. Lossless scaling is only working for Windows at the time of making this video. This also only works if your game is running in borderless mode or windowed mode. It'll basically work with all game backends like DirectX, OpenGL, or Vulkan. It's used for two main things, upscaling games from a lower resolution and introducing frame generation. And it is recommended to set your game's VSync to half your monitor's refresh rate to alleviate any kind of weird issues, graphical glitches, screen tearing. Personally, I haven't been using any kind of VSync at all, and it's been working pretty decently for me, but just keep that in mind. There's not much we can do with this without a game running, so we're actually going to be running Cyberpunk 2077. Let me go ahead and get this started up. So right now, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 running in borderless mode, obviously, 900p, and we are at ultra settings. So from here, just show you, we are at that ultra preset, video, borderless, 900p. We're not gonna be able to hit 60 on the ROG Ally X, and right now I am in performance mode. I've got Afterburner running, so we can see that FPS, definitely not close to 60, and we're at a 25 watt TDP. Now with lossless scaling, there's a lot more that we can get out of this. It's really awesome actually. And the developer has made it really easy to use. Again, if you wanna use the scaling side of things, you will need to be in borderless mode. I've got the app running on my taskbar here. We're gonna open it up. Again, unfortunately it is a paid app, but you know, I've been doing a lot of testing with it. It's six bucks over on Steam. This is definitely worth the money. Over here, we've got game profiles. So we can actually set up a custom profile and I would recommend doing this. You can set up a bunch of them, that way you can just pick and choose. But the first thing we're talking about here is the scaling mode. Auto actually works pretty well for upscaling your game. Right now, Cyberpunk is at 900p, but we can upscale to 1080 and it does look pretty good. From our scaling mode, I've been using auto and it seemed to work pretty well, but we can go to custom and our scale factor can be changed. Scale factor one isn't gonna upscale us any, so that's native. If we go up to 1.3, quality, 1.5 and 1.7 is like balance scaling. And then 2.0 is gonna be performance. So usually what I do here is auto. Then we're gonna move over to our scaling type. From the drop down, we can use AMD FSR, NVIDIA image scaling, integer, nearest neighbor. But the one that I've been using is the LS1. Now that's for the app, lossless scaling. And this scaling method is pretty good, but it is pretty sharp even if you turn this down. But I'll tell you, if you're using a smaller screen like a handheld, you can leave it right there at one. We're going to do that for now. It's just going to be a bit sharper. Either way, for 3D games, I've been using LS1. I've got this set up exactly how I want it for Cyberpunk 2077. And in order to enable it, we're going to choose scale up in the top right hand corner and then choose the application we want to scale. Give it a few seconds. It'll scale it up from 900p to 1080. And for the most part, going from 720 or 900p up to 1080 isn't going to give us a performance hit. And just to make sure you've got this set up correctly, you can head back into the app, right down here in status, scaling Cyberpunk 2077, resolution 1600 by 900 to 1920 by 1080. 
using a scale factor of 1.20. You can go with custom if you want to. I do like the LS1, but you can pick and choose, kind of just find what you like here. FSR is another great option. NVIDIA image scaling in this app, in my opinion, does not look great. So between LS1 and FSR, if you want to do some upscaling here. So this in itself is actually a great way to kind of pull a little bit of performance out of the game. Now you'll notice that our FPS isn't up any, but it hasn't dropped any either. We are now working with a scaled up resolution, which in my opinion does look pretty good here. I do like the LS1 and we're still at ultra settings. So yeah, to tell you the truth, I mean, if I went to 1080 right now native with this and then use that scaling at auto, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference here. The next thing I wanted to talk about here was frame generation. This is where we're going to get the real performance gains using lossless scaling. Frame generation, we've got two different modes, LSFG 2.3 and 1.1. I'm going to be going with 2.3. Our mode, 2x, 3x, 4x. Basically, two times the frame rate, three times the frame rate, four times the frame rate. For lower end units, I've been doing 2x. But if you're using something with a bit more power, you could go up to 4x. Basically, I just want to get up to that 60 mark at ultra with Cyberpunk on this unit here. I leave performance on, and if you keep an eye out, when you hover over something, it's going to give you a little explanation. I would definitely recommend reading through everything. Cursor, not something I mess around with. Performance, I leave this on. Sync mode, default, V-Sync, half, one-third one fourth, or you can allow tearing. I leave it at default, but there are people out there that swear by taking your game and kind of halving the frame rate inside of the game and then turning on V-Sync here. Another thing you can definitely experiment with, but default seems to work out really well for my use case scenario. Max frame latency. So this is where latency comes in. We're set to one out of the box. The higher you go, the better performance you will see, but this will introduce more latency. But this seems to work really well for my use case, and single player games are mainly what I play. So I'm going to two here. We don't need HDR. This now supports G-Sync and draw FPS. So this is the one I wanna enable because basically this is gonna give us a frame counter up in the top left-hand corner. It's gonna give us our previous FPS and our new generated FPS. So for this game, I've got LSFG 2.3, mode is X2, I use performance, sync mode default, max frame latency 2, draw FPS on. We're going to unscale just to kind of unlock it. We'll scale again, choose our game, give it a second to initialize. And now if you look up in the top left hand corner, you can see our previous FPS, and I'm actually going to make this just a bit bigger. It is pretty small. And our new generated FPS is over 60. I've still got Afterburner up and running, and unfortunately it just won't detect those generated frames. Uh, same with most of the other overlays on the market right now. So we do have that draw FPS on screen. So this is actually working really well on the ROG Ally, and I've tested this on a few different GPUs. Uh, the RX 6400 is actually a good use case scenario for something like this. A low-end GPU that struggles at those higher resolutions. You can use that scaling option, you know, take the resolution down, scale it up with software, and then add some frame generation and see some pretty decent frame rates out of it. With something like this on a handheld or a low-end PC, I think this could make a world of difference for people out there that are kind of struggling to get those frame rates they want. And so far in my time using lossless scaling, it's been working really well. Now I want to show you this real quick. We're still at 900p ultra. We're going to take it to medium. It's the only thing I'm going to change. Our frame rate is going to jump up because this little iGPU can handle medium better than ultra. And with the resolution scale and frame generation that lossless scaling can add in, we can see some really high frame rates here out of a low-end iGPU. And of course, it's not perfect. If I was to go up to X4 the frame rate right now, we'd see some issues on the sides of the screen when I turn real fast. It's because we just don't have enough power to push it. But keeping it at X2 works out really well. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I definitely recommend giving this a try. And it doesn't have to be a handheld. It doesn't have to be a laptop. You can use this on a desktop. I've seen people using this on an RTX 4090 just to pull a little more frames out of something. It's pretty cool. Works with all of those APIs. And in my opinion, it is worth seven bucks. 
I don't claim to be a pro with this application. These are basically the settings that I've been using for my devices and it's worked out great for me. So somebody else might be able to get some use out of this. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.